Hi and welcome everybody. Now this is going to be a slightly different video from normal. So if you're here wanting to watch card making, um, you're not going to get card making today. This is a little bit of a flashback for me to way back when, over 20 years ago when I did my theatre, film and television degree. And I've just been having a bit of a sort out and I found the costume designs that I did for Midsummer Night's Dream. Now it's not, I'm not showing these because I think the designs are any good <laughs> um it's more to do with the process and also uh looking at color and color theory and stuff like that and, and what colors evoke because in this project there are some mood boards and things where i've collected different pictures and inspiration and i just kind of want to show you a designer's process basically so this process is very similar to what, you know, even Stampin' Up! do when they are creating a suite of products. Um, it's similar to, you know, what fashion designers use, what other designers do. It, you know, it's it hasn't changed really that much in the last few years. Apart from the fact perhaps we use, tend to use Pinterest a little bit more. But there's nothing like just getting it on paper and, and having a go. Right, I'm just calling up my video so i can see your comments hello and welcome if you're watching on the live if you're watching on the replay thank you for uh indulging me with this little bit of a step back in time to my degree now i seem to remember that this project was part of a bigger project i actually designed a set as well to go with it but i haven't found the notes for that so here we go and I'm just going to just show you raw what, what it is on each page. I'm, I'm, I'm having to sort of really rack my brains to remember stuff, okay? So on here, I've got a bit of a brainstorm as to what I was going to work on. So here I've got themes and ideas and plays that interest me. So I've got, well, Georgia O'Keeffe. That's more, that's an artist. And you'll see some of her work in a second. So I love Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, colour, femininity, her paints would make interesting and colourful backdrops, also costumes inspired by her work, especially her flower paintings. And then I put the fantastical and fairy stories. So I've always loved fairy stories. That was kind of obviously working in there. Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Rapunzel, and then we've got Shakespeare, The Tempest, I've put in uh, especially or in Prospero's books, and then there's other plays that I... I enjoyed okay so I've got masks Mucha. so Mucha or Mucha was a Art Nouveau artist I did have one in the back of here but it's gone um, I really love his work um, I love elaborate so costume from specific areas I haven't changed much really have I costume from specific areas uh, eras um, body costumes body paint adapting and stylizing Maritzard stroke asylum okay Maritzard is a quite a disturbing play but anyway there we go okay so then I looked at an artist called Kandinsky hi everybody hi Wendy hi Martina Liz Janice and Pamela so if you don't know much about Kandinsky and you like I don't know ab abstract if you like looking at the correlation between music and art he was a really interesting guy because when he heard music he saw colors he, he just had this weird thing and so he would paint to depict noise, basically. So this was one of his paintings. It's called Swinging. Um, and there obviously was a jazz influence there. And lots of geometrics, which is quite interesting because I've got to do, do some work on geometrics soon. Okay, so there we go. There's a, mood, a thing to do with Kandinsky. And there's my little kind of play with looking at colour and dark to light, stuff like that. You did costumes and backdrops with pupils too. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so then, um, I don't know, I don't really know what, what this is all about, but anyway, all it says here is, the secrets of the soul are exposed through movement. Uh, for those who rely on the eyes for their making of meaning, there are different points of focus from which they can gain information. Thus, the lighter areas denote such. The head, the hands become infinitely more important. Okay, so I had in the back of my mind to design this for a hearing impaired audience. So this was just sort of thinking about that. 
And then here is another sort of painting that I did to depict, the, you know, the head, the heart and the hands and how important that that all is to, um, yeah, expression. Um, Jan Janice went to a Kandinsky exhibition at the Guggenheim. Oh, fantastic. Oh, how exciting. I managed to walk past the Guggenheim, but I didn't actually um, get, get chance to go in. OK, so here I've got lots of mood boards to do with Midsummer Night's Dream now. So this is one called The Woods and I've got Sensations and Colours. Now, a lot, some of this artwork here was taken from a book by Brian Froud <coughs> called Fairies. It was very popular in the 1970s and my art teacher introduced me to Brian Froud and I loved his work. Um, and so this is a photocopy from one of his books and then there's obviously just some things from magazines. And it's interesting because I still love wisteria, I still love flowers, <laughs> I still love fairies. <laughs> there we go. So here's another one. Uh, the woods, so we've got things cut out, got eyes, lots of powdery eyes. That one's kind of... Oh, impish, it says there, for this hair, very straggly hair. Oh, sensations, like bubbles. There we go. And what's this? This is... Oh, look, I was I was creasing up paper even 20 years ago. Look at that. Uh, I recently heard a lady from California who says she and several people in her family see colour when they hear music too. Yes, I think it's a specific um, thing in the brain. that it, it either, either you see it as an affliction or a, a gift. I don't know. It's just one of those funny things that happens to people or people born with. Okay, so rough cost, rough sketches for Midsummer Night's Dream. I wanted simple lines, not so that they wouldn't detract from the sign language. Okay, so I anticipated that this would be a signed performance. So as you can see, I've got, you know, this inspiration here, very simple lines. And the sleeves, you can see the sleeves here are darker. And that's because I wanted to have a contrast with for the, the signer. Um, and... Yeah, don't know. that's it. That was my rough, rough idea. So then I, there were two groups of characters you've got being represented. You've got Athens, and I can see I've written Athens here and Athens here. And I can't remember the story very well, to be quite honest. But I think I must have decided that, that Athens would be depicted in a certain way. So I've got blue and purple here. And then, again, these very simple lines that, I've kind of been inspired by these pictures from magazines. What comes next? Okay, again, simple lines, classical themes. Sorry, my son is making a right kerfuffle in the front room. Sorry, he's playing an online game and he's getting very excited. Right, so here we start to look at colours. Now, this is interesting. And... I'm going to flip flip back between these two pages. So I'd obviously been thinking about the colour wheel because you can see that I've painted out the colour wheel there. So you've got yellow, red and blue, which are the primary colours. Then you've got green, orange, uh, red, purple and violet. Um, sorry, start again. Orange, green and purple there, which are the colours that come from the primary colours and then the colours in between so I'd obviously been thinking about that then I started to write down words associated with those colours so I don't know if you guys can can see that so we've got for red we've got extrovert passionate vigorous prostitutes uh, orange here, spices, feminine energy, fruit, citrus, sunsets. Then we're going into yellows and happy intellect, sunshine, spring, tangy, so innocence, grass, hills, relaxing, organic, earthy. So the browns, I put the brown up there, but really the brown should have gone in the middle. But there we go. White, because that's, yeah, more to do, yeah. I've, I've obviously mixed up my light cut, uh, colours of light and colours of. Uh, pigments 
death uh, associated with white, well, white associated with death and purity. And then we've got youth here. We've got blue, spiritual, heavenly, cloud, sky, night, exotic with the purples. There we go. And then we've got red and white make pink. So we've got childish and girly there. Um, so then I've put the woods would be represented by these colours and then Athens would be represented by these colours here. So if I just bring back this sheet here, um, this was obviously me thinking about the set design for the two areas. I've got the woods and then Athens there like that. So yeah, just a little bit of experiment. Yes, I used to do that, Pamela, when, yeah, years years ago when I was started with my sort of art journey, I used to do that quite a bit. Okay, so then I've kind of extracted then the two halves of the colour wheel down to here. And then started to assign different characters to the different colours. So I've got um, Hippolyta and, who's that? can't even read what that says. Theseus, Theseus, Theseus. I don't even remember the names. Uh, Titania and Oberon, and then we've got Puck, and we've got the fa fairy colour. Oh, there, here we go. We've got Peas, blot Blossom, Cobweb, Moth, and Mustard Seed. Those are the fairies, aren't they? And then we've got the other characters here, Helena, Hermia, Demetrius, and Lysander. Okay, and then, so I've done then a mood board with... Uh, the colours are from that particular, uh, what I assigned to that particular location. So I've got Athens and then here, these are velvet. I know you probably can't tell that, but these are velvet. And then we've got these great big billowing white drapes. And then we've got some feathers and what's this up here? That's just like pieces of silk and um, what's that? some kind of habitat type thing. And then here we've got the woods, so I've got a great big picture of the wood and then the various colours and again more velvet and some earthy tones and sort of more linen-like fabrics and velvet there. Oh and here there's some more linen there with that. Okay. Sorry, I've got the creak of the so then we're looking at just other things. So colour psychology. So we've got Georgia O'Keeffe. So this is a painting by Georgia O'Keeffe. And then also looking at Walt Disney's Aladdin. So in my during my A-levels, I did a study on the depiction of good and evil through colour and or characters and things like that. So it's very obvious in Aladdin. You've got the blue genie, who's the good guy. And then you've got the red and black for Jafar. And um, you've got, well, Aladdin and purple, you know, signalling royalty. So once you start to sort of understand the colours and the association of different colours, when you see costume choices for characters in plays and films and, and so on, they kind of just help you form an opinion of that character. Now, sometimes that can be subverted. You know, when I think of, I don't know, the recent Maleficent, you know, that character is kind of depicted initially as being a real bad character, but then as you get to know her, there's something else about her. Okay, so then we're looking at fairies. So this is just how they've been depicted over the years. So we've got the Cottingley fairies, which was this massive hoax from the 19... Oh, early photography, basically. This guy took photos and doctored them and made it out that there were fairies in people's gardens. Then we've got Fairies and Foxgloves by Mary Brett. Then we've got an illustration by Margaret Tarrant. And then, of course, the Cicely Mary Barker, very famous for doing her flower fairies. So we've got the traditional view here. <laughs> and then we've got Jim Henson and his kind of take on things uh, through the labyrinth. And so these were very kind of subversive fairies, really. And, yeah, these were just photocopies from his book. And looking at slightly more uglier fairies. <laughs> so then I started to sketch out ideas of the actual costumes. And so I wanted them to look kind of slightly padded up. So I've got, you know, pad where I'd put extra padding. 
and uh, I've got here fake breasts, hips accentuated, large stomach, hunchback, large pouch in the crotch area, <laughs> uh, large buttocks, knee pads and so on. So I was very much inspired by those images by Jim Henson and, and looking at how I would kind of subvert those. Okay, so that's obviously what I was inspired by. What have I got here? Ooh, doubling of characters and then interval, audience allowed to wander around the set. Ah, that's interesting. There we go. That's just an, an additional note that I've put on the back of there. Okay, so then we need did the character of the moon. So um, I've put here, there are so many references to the moon that I felt that she should be personified as a separate character. There we go. I Don't ask me what the thinking behind that was. It's just obviously what I thought at the time. The moon, textures and colours, feathers, crushed velvet, silver embroidery on chiffon. And then here are some pictures. And now this is what I found quite interesting. Look at this. Does this remind you of something? <laughs> some current Stampin' Up! product. Uh, we've got some beautiful plaid paper at the moment. And so this was the mechanical. So I've put bright, gary colours. So I guess this was like the, the, the sort of funny element, the certain characters in Midsummer Night's Dream that I felt these colours and textures would, and patterns would go for. Okay. So then we're on to actually starting to design different things. So we've got very simple designs. And then here, look, I've put certain different size skirts for different people, depending what their character was like. And then here we've got um, the men's costumes. Again, very simple lines. We've got Theseus, Aegis, and I presume they are the sort of more powerful characters. So they've got a, a kind of um, a, cape, no, a, a coat-like design. And then I've got Lysander and Demetrius, and they're in trousers. So obviously I thought about the different characters and what they were going to do. So, oh, these are the fairies. There's a little bit more detail on this one. So we've got the fairies and we've got look, their funky hair. We've got some netting for their um, top. Then we've got some extra padding arm, pa arm bands or elbow pads, knee pads, um, odd shoes, odd socks, you know, that kind of thing. And then here we have the mechanicals. Oh, so here's bottom, the famous bottom. And he's in uh, colours that are opposite, and he's got odd, odd socks on as well. And then we had Oberon and Titania. So again, fairly simple lines, but a bit more raggedy. She's got silver in her hair, look at that. Look, I was doing dotage way back then. And, oh look, I obviously like this character that I made up, the moon, because I spent a bit more time on her. So, I, uh, what's it say? Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittery gleams, I trust to take of truest this be sight. So, we've got... There we go, lots of detail on her. And... I'm running out of battery, everybody. Um, I've got lots of, yeah, just lots of detail. Very pretty. There we go. And then, I think, oh, we're on to the last page. Oh, and there's Puck. There we go. Less padding around the stomach. Um, and then lots of funky colours. Um, he was the kind of, I guess, the fool element, wasn't he? So there we go. That is my Midsummer Night's Dream costume project from way back when. And how you kind of set up designs and gather materials. And also when you're actually studying, it's really important to show through, show your thought process as well. Because sometimes I was guilty of just coming up with the idea and not being able to back up why I'd chosen certain things. So 
this is a really good example of how you should really follow through your design thinking and, and where things come from. There we go. Right, thank you so much for uh, watching me, guys, and I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you, if you didn't, don't worry, I've got plenty of other videos to do with card making and stamping, but I, I thought it would be nice just to share this with my followers who know a little bit about me and my interests. There we go. Right, lots of love to you all. Have a great day. Bye.